You may have already seen my video on solar generators. If not, you might want to check for that on my YouTube channel. Solar generators are great when you need both DC and AC power out in the field. They also have very convenient connection uh, built into the generator itself. They have USB charging ports and so on. But if you don't need all of that and all you need is basic DC power when you're out in the field, you want to look at lithium iron phosphate batteries. So today I'm going to review one of those batteries. This is a 50 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery from BioAno Power. Now one of the reasons I wanted to review this battery from BioAno Power is that they are a US based company. They're located in Santa Ana, California, which made it very easy for me to pick up the phone, give them a call and ask them if they wouldn't mind sending me one of their batteries for review. Now I realize their batteries as well as their accessories are obviously made overseas, but you're dealing with a US based company if you have any technical questions, need accessory support, or have a warranty issue. BioAno Power sells batteries anywhere from 3 amp hours all the way up to 3000 amp hours, so they probably have a battery in the capacity range that you would be interested in. They also have numerous accessories, solar panels, solar charge controllers, and AC chargers specifically for lithium iron phosphate batteries. BioAno Power seems to be very big in the ham radio industry and also with RC modelers. I was interested in one of their batteries to see how it performed out in the field with my astronomy equipment. This 50 amp hour battery weighs just 13.3 pounds. It's very lightweight. As you can see, it has a built-in plastic carrying strap, which makes it very convenient. It measures 8.4 inches long by 4.5 inches wide and 5.8 inches high. So it's very light and compact. This is also rated like most lithium iron phosphate batteries for at least 2,000 full discharge cycles. And it ex it's expected to last five to 10 years on the shelf. This particular battery sells for just under $470. Now you can find cheaper batteries online uh, coming out of China. But the advantage I felt of BioAno Power is that they are local in the US. And like I said, it was very easy to pick up the phone and call them and talk to them about my interest and my needs. Now, like all lithium iron phosphate batteries on the market, this battery has an internal BMS, or they call it a PCM, protection circuit module. The purpose of that BMS is to balance the individual cells with inside this battery to make sure they're at the same voltage. It's also there for over voltage, over current, and short protection. Now, it's also there to prevent over discharge, which means that when you run this battery down to a certain level, it will automatically shut itself off and you will not damage the individual cells inside because the internal BMS is maintaining those cells above a minimum required voltage so that it, they're not damaged. The operating temperature for this battery is that's minus 10 C to 60 C. But you must keep in mind that you cannot charge these batteries below freezing, that 32 degrees. Otherwise, you will damage the internal cells and ruin the uh, total capacity of the battery. Uh, apparently, this battery does not have low temperature sensors internally, so the BMS won't automatically shut itself off if you try to charge it below freezing. So keep that in mind. For my purposes in testing this battery, I'm going to use this cable that I also got from BioEno Power, which you could make yourself if you prefer. It just says uh, lugs on one end and Anderson power pole connectors on the other, and you just screw that on to the battery terminals like you would anything else. So I'm going to do a number of tests with this that I typically do with uh, solar generators and lithium batteries. I will do full discharge tests a number of times to see whether or not this provides the full 50 amp hours. Also, we'll take a look at the voltage drop with capacity because even if it goes to 50 amp hours, once the voltage drops below say 12 volts, it's not that useful for most of our equipment. I will also do uh, charging time tests, both with an AC charger and a solar panel that BioAno Power was kind enough to send to me. And then for the final test, and the most important test, I'll take this out into the field with my astronomy equipment, 
over a multi-night visit under the stars and I'll let it supply the power to my equipment and see how many hours I can actually run with this 50 amp hour battery. The first test I like to do with these lithium power sources is a 100% discharge capacity test. So we start with the BioAno battery fully charged and we'll use this dummy load which has a cooling fan because it will consume the energy coming out of the battery and generate some internal heat. And we'll run it until there's no energy left in the battery. So we have to hook up the battery output to the dummy load and we'll turn this on and bring up the current. So I like to do this test right around 5 amps. And at 5 amps, this thing is drawing about 67, 68 watts. Now I think that's pretty reasonable power. Lots of astronomy setups will be less than that. Some will be right near that, depending on whether you have dew heaters on, camera coolers on, whatever. And a few will be higher than that. So I typically do these tests at 5 amps, which is around 67, 68 watts. I have run these tests at 9 and 10 amps, and it makes no difference in the capacity because the battery is rated at 50 amps of total current that it could produce for a one hour period. So 5 or 10 amps is not going to put a strain on it. So We'll let this thing run, and if we zoom in, we can see the display. Now this display will tell us the voltage. You see the voltage is a 13.1 to 13.2 volts. We're running at about 5.1 amps, 67.4 watts. It'll measure the number of amp hours, watt hours, and the total time. So there you have it. After 9 hours and 18 minutes, we've depleted the capacity of this BioEno Power 50 amp hour battery. It's at a state of 0% charge, and we received 46.6 amp hours. Now this is the fifth time I've run a full capacity test, and in the previous four, I've gotten anywhere between 46.6 all the way up to 47.7 amp hours. So this battery is supplying around 93 to 94.5% of its rated capacity, which is pretty typical of batteries you'll find on the market. They do reserve a little bit of their power for the BMS inside. The BMS still needs to have power to be operational so that it can manage the recharge cycle and make sure everything is done according to specification and there's no um, out of safety conditions. Well, as I mentioned before, it isn't just what is the total capacity of the battery in terms of amp hours and watt hours, but how many of those amp hours and watt hours are supplying a voltage above 12.0 volts? And if we look at this curve, set of curves, we see the orange curve is the BioAno battery and the blue curve is a typical lead acid battery. So lead acid batteries will maintain a voltage above 12 volts through about 42% of the remaining capacity. So you get about a little over 50% of the battery at 12 volts or higher. Whereas the orange curve shows that the BioAno battery maintains more than 12 volts output all the way down to about 4% capacity remaining. So you get 96% of its total capacity at 12 volts or more, which is almost double what you get out of the lead acid battery. And that really is the key indicator of importance. So the next test is a recharge time test. We're going to do that with an AC power supply and we're also going to do it with a solar panel. So here we have a lithium charger sold by BioAno. This is a 10 amp charger that has the correct voltages and charge cycle for a lithium battery. 
You can get these from other vendors. I'll put links to these at the end of the video. This, as I said, is a 10 amp one. We would expect this to take about five hours to fully recharge this from zero state of charge to 100% since, it, since it's a 50 amp hour battery. You can also get these in 15 and 20 amps, which will take correspondingly less time. The nice thing about the one we have here from BioAno is it has a Anderson power pool connector on its output which mates very easily with the Anderson power pole connectors on the battery itself. And then when I plug it in, it will begin charging. And you can hear there's a cooling fan. And I actually like to take a little block of aluminum or something because these do get warm. They don't get so hot that it's a problem, but I always like to keep things cool. So I put it on there and I will let it continue to charge. There are LEDs on the side, and this thing will automatically stop when the battery is fully recharged. So that's a nice feature. You do, if you know you, uh, how much of the battery you've used, you can easily estimate how long it will take to fully recharge it. Like I said, in my tests, I've done this test previous to this, it's taken just under five hours to fully recharge this battery. So that's how you recharge it with an AC charger. Uh, next, we want to look at solar charging. So the next test I need to perform is a solar charge rate test. And for that test, we're going to use this 100 watt solar panel from BioAno Power. And I'm going to use this 30 amp MPPT solar charge controller also from BioAno Power. Now I performed this test already and I've done it three times to get an average time for fully recharging the battery from zero state of charge to 100%. And I've done the test in full sunlight. So if you don't have full sunlight, obviously it won't be as take, it will take longer. Now, I had to make two sets of cables here, short cables with Anderson power pole connectors on either end. Uh, you can use whatever connectors are appropriate for you. I'm using the Anderson power pole because that's what I have on the battery. And this solar panel comes with a 50 amp Anderson power pole connector. And so I've got an adapter from 50 amp to this 30 amp Anderson power pole connector that I'm using. Um, some solar panels come like the Jackery with an eight millimeter connector and most come with the MC4 connectors. So in either case, you gotta get the appropriate connectors and gauge wire. Now the solar panels don't put out that much current, so it's not that big of a deal. The first thing you wanna connect is the battery to the solar charge controller and then the solar panel to the solar charge controller. And you need to make sure that you have a lithium battery capable solar charge controller and you set it to the correct settings. So first connect the battery, then connect the solar panel, and then we will start to see current flowing between the two. So we'll just let this run. Typically I will let it run, adjust the solar panel to maximize the input and watch that until the this basically shows zero charging current. Well, the sun is obviously gone now, but it took a total of eight hours to fully recharge from zero state of charge to 100% state of charge. And I've done this test a couple of times with a couple of different 100 watt solar panels and get the same result. So the most important test was the actual field test to see how well the BioAno Power 50 amp hour battery would run my astronomy rig and how many nights I could go without recharging. So here is my setup out at a dark site in Northern California. I'm using a uh, Celestron 11 inch SCT riding on top of a software bisque MX mount. I have a ASI 1600 color camera which is uncooled in an ASI guider. I'm also using a Celestron motorized focuser. I have cooling fans on the SCT, and I do not have to use a dew heater in this setup 
because the weather was warm enough, it was not an issue. Down below, I am driving everything with a mini PC from B-Link and I also have a wireless router which gets power from the mini PC and enables me to view what's going on on a laptop which is powered separately of the BioEno battery. All of the power is routed from the BioEno battery through a Pegasus power box which acts both as a power distribution hub and a USB hub for me. Since the MX mount requires 48 volts and the BioEno battery is supplying 12 plus volts, I have a DC to DC voltage converter to take the 12 volts to 48 volts. All told, I'm running at about 30 watts and I ran for three nights successively for a total of 20 hours without recharging and uh, in between. If I had used a, the dew heater and if I had a cooled camera, I would expect to run at about 60 watts or so, and that would reduce the total runtime from 20 hours down to about 10 hours. So this is a pretty good small battery to run a small rig for multiple nights under the stars, or even if you're running 60 watts, you could recharge during the day and keep running continuously night after night so long as you get the opportunity to recharge during the day. Summarize the results. This battery provided 47.6 amp hours or 606 watt hours, which is right at 95% of its rated capacity. And I consider that pretty good by comparison to other batteries on the market. More importantly, it maintained a voltage over 12 volts for 96% of its actual capacity. Now in the charging tests, where we recharged this from a 0% state of charge to a 100% state of charge, we found that with a 10 amp lithium AC charger, it took a little under five hours. And with a 100 watt solar panel, it took a total of eight hours. Now in the all important field tests, with my astronomy setup, which used 30 watts, I was able to run for 20 hours. You can scale that for your particular power requirements. So for instance, if you need 60 watts, to power your equipment, this battery could last for about 10 hours. But of course you could recharge or partially recharge during the day depending on how much sunlight time you have and you can run even longer. Overall what do I like about this battery? Well first of all it's a US based company, easy to get a hold of if you have technical issues, technical questions or warranty support is needed. Second, 96% of the capacity is over 12 volts, that's very good. And as I said before, it's a small lightweight form factor, so it's very easy to take out in the field to power your equipment. What don't I like about it? Well, the price is kind of high. At $470 for 50 amp hours, this is much more expensive than many of the batteries coming out of China. But it's not more expensive when you compare it to the other US-based companies like Battleborn and Dakota Lithium. And the other thing that I'm not so happy about is the two-year warranty. Whereas Ampertime offers a five-year warranty on their batteries and Battleborn a whopping 10-year warranty. But all in all, I think this battery would perform well if you want something from a US-based company and you need something somewhere between three amp hours to 300 amp hours, BioEno battery is an option for you. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, please press the like button. If you want to see additional equipment reviews and other astronomy tips and tricks, please subscribe to this channel. You may also want to visit my website, californiaskies.com, where I have more information on astronomy topics. And I will post uh, links to the equipment that I mentioned in this video down below the video. So thank you for watching.